Hey, hello everybody. Today I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna talk about how to make your the purfling yourself. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to play in the, the popular into thick thick shavings like this. Um, I'm gonna show you how to to color the the pear with black to to dye it black, and um, and then the gluing and of course the, the cutting into strips. So. Um, yeah, maybe you think uh, you think uh, by yourself like why even bother in making your own purfling? And I think it's it's one of those crucial things which you really have to do as a as a as a maker today uh, to distinguish yourself from from other makers or from from cheaper instruments. Uh, everybody knows the purfling you buy is uh, perfect uh, purfling. The the white and black is completely uh, the same thickness all over, and it's just this little. Uh, errors in, in making the purfling yourself, which which gives a lot of character. Um, it's all also in, in antique instruments. It's, it's one of those crucial things where you can uh, recognize a style or a maker. So um, I think it's you have to do it today. So enjoy the video. Uh, if you want to see more of the of the trade secrets I'm sharing, please subscribe to my channel uh, and stay tuned. I like to show you how a purfling, how this purfling, what I make, looks like when it's when it's finished, and it's as you can see. What I would like to show you is that it's far from perfect. Like you see, those little imperfections, like the purfling is growing from thicker to thinner, and the black and the white is not everywhere the same. And but it's not because you have these um, imperfections and. That it that it doesn't look neat. It's still perfect, and it but it gives a lot of character. And I would dare to say that it's yeah, it's not so boring as as a purfling which you buy. So so that's why I do it. It gives a lot of character and and uh, liveliness to yeah to the purfling and to to the whole instrument actually. In a minute, I'm gonna start cleaning the the popular. So popular is used traditionally used as the middle part of the inlay. Um, I have a block here, it's quarter sawn, so this block, the grow rings, they run down in this direction and I'm perpendicular on the grow rings, there's a surface which I'm going to take my, uh, my shavings off. A really nice feature when you do it in this way is that when you take your shavings off like this, they crawl up inside the plane and it breaks a little bit along the fiber. And um, I'm going to try to show you, and this one has it too much, but it's a nice example. And as you can see, so it, it crawls up inside the plane and it comes out like this. And it's actually, you see, it's breaking along the fiber of the wood. When you glue this, when you make your sandwich of the two blacks and the white in between, these open seams, they stay a little bit open. And when you varnish your instrument, um, there's a little bit of varnish creeping in inside these open seams and it's highlighting the, the, gray, the, the fiber of the wood. And this is a, a nice detail. It's something what you see uh, in old instruments, um, especially on, on Del Jesus, you see it a lot. Uh, and sometimes you don't see it, or like on Stradivarius, it's, you don't see it a lot. But you can, like for instance, you can choose if you have it or not. It depends on how you set up your plane. Like you see those, they're, they're, they have no breakage at all, so I'm going to try to show you. So here, these are just clean shavings, no breakage at all. And it, it has to do with how you how you set up your plane. And some poplar also is, uh, has it more than, than other poplar. So, but you can choose to have it or not to have it. So uh, let make, let's make some, some shavings and see how it goes. Before we start, I'm going to show you how I set up my plane. Um, I have my lovely number five Lee Nielsen here. And for making this very thick shavings, what you need to do is you have your chip breaker. And that's this part here. Set it back like a bit more than a millimeter. You see, it's not too close. If it's too close, you're not able to make those thick shavings. Of course, you want a nice thick blade which gives you more stable uh, planing. And um, yeah, and then very important is that your knife is nice and parallel left and right. So that means if I look like this, 
and it's hard to get a focus. Now I see the right side is a bit higher. So I'm going to make this adjustment. And of course you want to have it the same left and right. That gives you uh, the same thickness of shaving left and right. First step in the process is I have a wet towel. I'm going to steam my wood makes it easier to play. So this is wet. I have my iron and I'm steaming the wood. Normally, this is a two man job, um, but it happens that I'm here by myself today. So I figured something out, do this by yourself. So normally I would connect a rope on the on the front of my of my plane and then somebody will pull my plane forward while I'm giving pressure down on the back side. But let's see if it's also possible like this. So what I've done is I have an elastic band here tied on one of those knocks and I'm just gonna try to do it like this. So here we go. Pressure down, nicely in the middle and here we go. I think this one is still too thin. Let's measure this. And oh, it's actually, it's 0 0.5, so 5 tenths of a millimeter. And I want to have six tenths of a millimeter in the, so I'm gonna turn my plane a bit higher. Up, here we go. And I'm steaming again now. So always give it a nice steam. Doing this by yourself, I would recommend to only a few. It's quite hard uh, to do it, so don't expect you're doing this half a day. But for a few shavings, it's okay. Here we go. And like you see these shavings, they're not breaking like the, the, the one I showed you. It's nice and clean. So, what I have here, a bit more. But you see it's nice, consistent all over. Still, turning the plane a bit higher. Steaming, and I know in doing it alone, 0 0.6, that's the maximum I can do. Uh, that's also the thickest what I ever make my, my white of my inlay. Um, most of the time I make, yeah, quite, I, I never go over 1.2, 1.3 millimeter in thickness, total thickness. So uh, 0 0.6, in the middle part, that's what I do most of the time. Sometimes 0 0.5 if I want to have a really thin inlay, a delicate inlay. Let's see. Pressure down and here I go. And by the feel, I think I'm there. Voila, like you see, 0 0.6. So that's it. So now I make a few.
So these are the things that I need for staining the pear with black. Um, the pear wood is used for the black part of the inlay, uh, for the purfling, and here I used a, a sheet of veneer, pear wood veneer that I cut into strips. Uh, I wanted to have strips of four centimeter wide, the same as the popular uh, shavings we did. So, and making this by hand is impossible. If I do it by hand, I only can do two centimeters wide. So I want to have four centimeters, so that's fine. Um, so the pear wood, then of course a heater, a pot of water, some protecting gloves because we're using nitrum hydroxide and this is, um, yeah, it's quite dangerous. It has a really hard bite in it. Uh, so use your protection. The iron, iron sulfate, this is used to set a color and then also the Kampesh wood, uh, the blue holes in German, uh, this is to color the pear wood. So it gives a, uh, a really purple, almost blackish color to, to the pear wood. And then the iron sulfate will set the color and turn the purple into black. So the first thing I do is the pot of water, and this is probably five liters. Um, I put two spoons of natrium hydroxide inside. And this is done for cleaning the wood. Um, so use your protection. So two spoons, that's it, then give it a stir. Actually, I don't need to put it on the heater. It, the water doesn't need to be warm. So when you see that the uh, nitrum hydroxide is dissolved, you can put your shaving in there and just leave it in there for, for one hour. Within the hour, just move it around so your shavings, they, um, they get to soak equal. So that's the first step. So now I'm gonna leave it one hour and then we're gonna do the next step. So this is how it looks after one hour. So you see the, the water has some color, the wood got a little bit darker and that has to do with the nitrum hydroxide. So now I'm gonna rinse this truly in the sink and um, so all the nitrum hydroxide is gone. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the next step. So while I leave my water to boil, I, you see I'm making a stack of the, the pear wood shavings and I'm putting toothpicks in between. And that's because uh, if you put it in the boiling water, they, all, they will stick together and then the color will be uneven. The places where they do stick together, they will be uh, a lot lighter in, in color. So that's why. And of course you can, maybe you're watching this and you, you tell like, hey, you can buy like stained black, uh, stained pear wood. But yeah, you can buy a complete filing stool or you can buy, um, you can buy everything <laughs> from the shop. So that's the whole reason why I like being a filing maker is doing all these things yourself. It's just, uh, I enjoy doing it. And it's a challenge of doing things. You also get the possibility to, to play a little bit. Like sometimes on old antique instruments, you see the purfling, which is not colored perfectly. You see like the black is a little bit lighter inside the black. So, and this doing it yourself gives you the possibility of copying all these things, copying or trying to figure out how they did it and and try to have the same uh, errors, more or less. So then next, you see, I take a rope, 
and I tie it not too firm, of course, it's just together. Otherwise, we're going to lose too much of the sticks in the boiling process. And like this, everything stays together. You're going to lose some sticks anyway, but that doesn't matter. We don't want to have perfect stained shavings because then I would buy them. So now that everything is binded together, I'm gonna put it inside the hot water. It's not boiling yet, doesn't matter. You can boil if you want. Voila. While the water is getting hot, I have my campaign shoes here and just, it's already chipped. So I take a handful, I throw it in and yeah, two small hands. That's more than enough. So, and this wood will give off its color and it will stain the pear wood. As you can see, the water is already turning blackish purple and that's what you want. What I do is I leave it, the water is gonna boil and I leave it to boil for one hour and then I'm gonna turn off the heat and let it soak for another 24 hours. So um, tomorrow I come back uh, and then I do the, the next step. So here the next day, as you can see, the water is cold. It uh, was soaking for 24 hours. And that's the color of the water. It's quite purple. So now I'm just gonna um, go to the sink and pour it. If you don't want your hands to be uh, purple for the next week, use your gloves. And then just rinse it until all the color is gone. Here is my wood. As you can see, the wood is purple too. So it's not black yet. It is quite purple, bluish purple. And I try to keep the sticks in between because the next process is the boiling with the iron sulfate. Uh, so, um, so it's nice that the, the shavings are still apart from each other. So the next step, so here I have my rinsed um, shavings back in the water, like this. And then I'm gonna add to the water. One tablespoon of iron sulfate. Like this. And this will turn the bluish purple into black. And it will set a color. So you can already see on the stick the color immediately is black. So this, I'm gonna let it boil for one hour again and then let it soak again for overnight, for 24 hours. As you can see, color is completely black. It's been soaking overnight in the iron, the iron sulfate. And let's see, the wood, Looks pretty black to me. So again, let's go over to the sink, rinse it. Here we go. 
as you can see, this is completely black. It's really nice. I'm gonna take off the the strings and then I will show you how I dry it. So after that they are rinsed, uh, they're still wet. So I take, I put them on the towel, and I'm just gonna dry them a little bit that most of the water is off. I already did these so and then don't leave them to dry like this because they will completely um, crawl up and they will be impossible to use so what I do is I stack them and I clamp them so I do like this and I put some sheet of uh, kitchen paper between so the the water gets absorbed more or less and like this I'm gonna make a stack of all of them and I'm gonna clamp it between those the two bars Now that, that I have my uh, shavings, my black shavings and my white shaving, um, I'm gonna glue the, the purfling together. So what I have here is just a piece of um, wood to put the glue on the shavings and then this is my wood to clamp the purfling together. Uh, I put a piece of tape on there so it's, the purfling is not sticking to the, to the, to the wood. This, I'm using a normal bone glue for this. Hot glue. You can see it's normal, um, normal thickness. And here we go. So first the black, and there's a little trick. If I would, if I'm do, if I would do uh, glue on one side, the, the, the shaving will uh, crawl up. So what I do is on the other side, First, I just do some water and then on this side I'm going to do the glue. Then the white glue on both sides. Use enough glue, so um, you see I'm using glue on both sides too. Make sure it's aligned and then the same here. First some water on one side and then glue on the other side. Little, and if you want, you can because there's a little bit of glue on this side, just wipe it off a bit. Like this, and then clamp it. Initially, I'm just put the clamps on there with not a lot of tension, and then when they're all on there, I'm gonna put tension on it and I'm gonna 
try to have the same tension all over. Because actually, if you want, you can squeeze it's so hard that the inlay will become thin. So that's it. I leave it overnight to dry and then when I take it out it still will be a little bit damp so I leave, I leave it to dry outside the clamps for another half day probably and then it's fine to use. So after gluing the purfling, the sandwich purfling together, uh, you get this of course wider and we'll show you. So the, here you can see the the purfling, the black, white, black, and it's a sheet, of course, it was wider. I already cut some strips of it, and that's the purfling what I'm gonna use. So, cutting the strips, it's quite, it's pretty straightforward. So, you have the sheet, and now it's already quite thin. But what I do, you have this, this cutter, and I will show you. It's just a very easy, uh, you see, there is a knife and I can um, set the width that I'm gonna cut it, and that's it. So I have my shooting board here, any board will do. Hold it like this, and then I cut along the length of the purfling. Both sides. It, and then it depends on how deep you cut it, but here you see I just can kind of break it off and I have a new strip. What I do then, I take a sandpaper and I go around like this to break up the edges so it works better when you put it into the purfling channel of your instrument. So that's it, that's the result. Perfect handmade purfling. So now that you've seen the video, I hope you're never gonna buy the boring factory once again. Uh, if you do the effort of uh, building your is the instrument yourself, please do the effort of making the purfling yourself. It's definitely worthwhile. It gives a lot of uh, character to your work. It defines your style. Um, so no reason anymore to uh, screw around with the factory ones. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments please write them down below if you want to see more of my trade secrets i'm sharing uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, see you next time